here we'll start a new episode so we uh we just worked the grass different kind of grass to finally get ourselves I thought that was vibrating for a second. To finally get ourselves a tractor that actually has a PTO. Thanks, Insig. That actually has a PTO on it so we can actually use some of this equipment. Um, I had made a lot of mistakes and didn't have the right equipment before. But we have the right equipment now. Kind of. One of the things, I will tell you, one of the things this mod has is it comes with a trailer that can attach on the back of this baler. And the trailer has an auto load. So it will catch these. Um, it's an additional 5,000 for the trailer. And we're at the point now where 5,000 seems like luxury money for all those rich, rich folks to spend. So until we win the lottery, we'll have $5,000 to spend on, a, on an auto load trailer, specifically for bailers. Hey, Duster, thanks for hanging out. Uh, have a good night, and I will see you next time. Looking <laughs> at It's this map. So this is Calm Land, by the way. Um, I have deleted all the starting equipment specifically to kind of give us a harder start. But uh, this map does start you out with essentially the equipment you need to work a field. It also has collectibles around the map that I'm intentionally not getting. That's just because on this time we're we're actually trying to do a more kind of start from scratch playthrough. Um, kind of treating it as like a hero, a zero to hero run, for those of you who have heard that term before. By the way, here's the thing. So each of these bales is 250 liters, which doesn't sound like a ton, especially considering the mower attachment holds 5,500. So realistically, it would take a lot of these bales to make up the same size of that mower. But this does also seem a little bit more genuine. And when it comes to straw, we made the agreement that we would only do, we did the shovel thing to pick up all the straw before, and we made the agreement we would only do that once. So this is a more realistic way of actually picking up straw or grass or something. Um, we're bailing it in bales that you could easily pick up by yourself. I'm not ha like I'm not using super strength or anything. These are the these are actual bales that you could actually get and you could actually fling around. See they're only 30 kilograms. Just starting my chunk here. And once we sell all this grass, we'll advance the next day and we'll go take care of that other field. What is the speed on this? 25? Hey, that's much better. The bale cannon is pretty funny. This doesn't have... Yeah, no it doesn't. So when I was checking there, I, this trailer is technically a tipper trailer with a capacity of, I think it's 3,000 liters. Um, I'm using it like a bale trailer, but it does not have the straps. So you cannot secure a load in this. We, we actually used this for our first grain harvest. Um, so just a heads up, and this is also on the Mod Hub. It's a, it's a pretty inexpensive early tipper trailer, and you can use it similar to a flat trailer, but you have to be careful with it because it does not have those tie downs. And I think that's a fair trade. You know, again, once we're rich and we can actually afford things, then uh, we'll get more things.
I think we're going to kind of break even here. Or uh, I think we're going to get a fairly similar load when we do the mower, but... Are you going to... Are you too high? You're going to make me... Okay, why are you selling? Oh no, don't tell me it won't sell bales here. <gasps> That's could be a problem. Is this only by loose grass? I thought this bought bales. Ew, ew. Um, um, who's <laughs> More mistakes were made. Yay! <laughs> Do we have another spot? This is the only spot. Really not buy grass bales. Oh no. <laughs> Thanks, carry on. Oh, no. well, more mistakes are made. Thing we have a chainsaw. I know, right? Do not appreciate continuing to run into issues. Now, I think what we need to do. We're going to save these for sheep. You can. There is a bale shredder. Um, you can't cut the individual bales. Like, I can't... Yeah. So I can't, like... I can pick this thing up, but I can't just... Um, cut the twine here and let it fall open. Uh, I think I'm at, like, 14, 1500 hours in it right now. It was it was the f one of my fastest games to a thousand hours. That's hay, right? That's not grass. And this is uh, for those of you who are new here, because I do see a good amount of workers, and I appreciate everybody. Um, this is we kind of started this as a start from nothing or a zero to hero. Under 24 hours. Ass! It is one of my favorite games right now, and I love the flexibility with it. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do where it on the leftover grass is I'm going to throw one outside. Um, I think I'm just going to use the mower and pick it up. That's kind of a shame. This is... Uh, yeah. Ta-da! Alright, so let's use the mower. That's a shame that the I um I actually kinda wonder if that's a config issue. Normally you can sell bales of grass. Normally you can sell loose bulk stuff and the bale bulk stuff at the same spot. <laughs> so I I don't know if that's actually an issue with the map configuration. Because you should theoretically be able to sail sell sail sell. Sell bales at the same spot you can sell the loose grass. It actually makes me wonder if um, you can sell straw bales there. Carry on, by the way. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask away. I always try to take the time to answer. Um, and I know some things... Some of the new player experience isn't that fantastic. But I'd be more than happy to explain what I can. I do have a good amount of mods running. Um, including precision farming. Typically, they're not. It's a good question, though. Typically, bales are not listed as a separate sale. I Sorry. 
on the sale thing here, they're typically not listed as a separate sale. This is a modded map, and that could be... Like, all of this stuff, these are crops... Crops. Mashed potatoes. Um, donuts! <gasps> I want donuts. Sorry, squirrel. Anyways, um, there's not typically a separate listing... So this map clearly has some modded production chains in it. We're definitely gonna have to figure out how to do two donuts. I do. Do you want croquettes? Is that what I'm hearing? There's potato pancakes. You want the croquettes? <gasps> Look, you can't sell them anywhere. So uh, you can't sell potato salad either. <sighs> Interesting. Those don't have a sell point. French fries don't have a sell point? Shame. You know what? I bet you there is a... I bet you there, this map has a placeable uh, production sell point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So these are... It looks like this... Oh, I added potato processing. I'm an idiot. I added this mod. So you have to do... There's a mod specifically for selling these things. Open commands? Is it not tilde? I don't know. Oh, you have to do... I think there's a launcher option. Are you playing the Steam version? I feel like there is a modifier you have to put on the launching option in Steam to enable um, admin codes. What are you trying to do, if you don't mind me asking? Other than open the command box. What do you want to even use the command box for? What dog? I don't have a dog yet. Oh, to give you more money? So here's what I would suggest. Um, you can either Google how to uh, how to enable commands for farms. Like I said, I think there's a launcher control you have to do for it. The other thing you can do is on the in-game mod hub, which is the from the, the main menu, there's that downloadable content. Under game tools or gameplay, one of the options there, one of the games there is called the, or sorry, one of the mods there, um, I think it's called the uh, Power Tools mod. And what it does... Yeah, on the Xbox I think it works on the Xbox version. Yeah, so I don't think you can do command... I don't know that you can do command box at all on the Xbox version. So you would need to go to the um, mod hub through that downloadable content. And there is a mod there called Power Tools. What Power Tools does is it enables an in-game menu that allows you to use many of those console commands. So for example, this is, by the way, this is what Power Tools looks like. So it gives you options to do like spawn things, turn on super strength, activate flight mode, turn the HUD on and off, add or remove money, save, force a save game, force an exit, etc. So this, th this mod is called Power Tools. It's actually how on this map, I reduced the dollar, the money to zero when we started out. That's how I set it to be a like zero to hero start. And I would recommend using, enabling that because I don't think on Xbox you can actually even use the command, the console command. I think they disabled them. Um, so on the Steam version, and again, I would recommend Googling this because I could be entirely wrong, but my understanding is that on the Steam version, there is... Ow! I was talking! What's up, kid? Jeez, how are you doing? Yeah, anyways, on the... Uh yeah. Oh, is it the XML file? Okay. 
So I remember somewhere in there there was something you had to do. Thanks, Rad. So I would recommend carry on. I would recommend going to the mod hub, the downloadable content, and getting that Power Tools mod. That'll give you the same functionality. And just once you enable that, go into your controls, and you can set the control to enable that Power Tools. So that'll give you the same function you were trying to do, um, just a different way to get to it. So, uh, I had a dermatology appointment today, like first thing in the morning, a little bit eight o'clock in the morning. Um, cause I am very fair skinned and I have spots that just need to be checked out. It has been a long time since I've gone to a dermatologist, uh, 20 something years. And, uh, I was not prepared for how, how do I say personal? <laughs> that that appointment got um, you know I've gone to the doctor many times I was not expecting 8am on a Friday to basically like essentially get a full body scan <laughs> almost like almost to that level they did take uh, several chunks out of my body to then send off to the lab you know, I'm assuming to make clones to then make more raptors, but yeah. <laughs> Crazy thing about that joke is there are people out there that don't know that lifesavers make breath mints. Yeah, more bears. Uh, I'm clearly a raptor. It's in the name. Okay, so some mistakes were made on this. Um, there's a certain amount of potential income here that we are missing because we apparently can't sell these bales. But at the end of the day, we did sell all, all of our grass. Okay, let's get this one over there so we don't lose that. So we'll store those. I'll. I'll keep these as potential income. Um, they need more offensive linemen. You're not wrong. But what I'll do is I'll move those back over to, to our, and we'll store them at our farm. Their potential income for the future, um, maybe I can get like some sheeps or something. Is it PC? Damn it. Yeah, that's the truth. The, the other option... Thanks, Red. Um, the other option would be the government subsidy, which essentially you can buy placeables that generate money. And, it's, and by buy, I mean the placeables are free and they just generate a certain amount of money each day. Um, I didn't... I couldn't tell whether Power Tools was... had scripting or not. There are some limitations to mods on consoles just because of limited programming. Uh, there isn't a way to tell specifically if it's for bales. Um, bales are not listed as a separate sell item. It's by the product. This is called calm lands. So I don't know if there is a placeable that would allow me to sell 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 Jesus sell bales. Because bales are not listed as a specific commodity. I think it is a map problem. I bet you if I went in and looked at the config on that cell point, um, that it just doesn't have baled grass as an option. Or it might not have that size bale. That's actually, that, that could be a good point. Um, that's technically a modded baler. And I've never run into the issue before where I couldn't sell those where I, on places where I couldn't sell the crop. Um, but it could be because that's a modded baler and it's using smaller bales. And I don't know, thanks for the follow. Yeah, I thought there was too. I mean, we've sold 
bulk obviously we sell bulk grass at that spot and that's the only place that's listed for grass um and it may be specifically because it's grass uh i think it's i i don't it's either f11 is it f12 okay it's f12 um i bind mine to f11 because f12 is the steam screenshot key But you're on Xbox, so I don't I don't know what it is on that. You can just go into your um, keybinds though, and there'll be a listing down at the bottom for power tools. Javin, don't be nice. Somebody's asking for help. Don't be trolly to people who are asking or genuinely asking for help. You can, you can be trolly any other day, but when somebody's genuinely asking for help, we help. We'll ignore that that equipment's not broken. Okay. Um, let's leave the trailer here. <laughs> I do remember Barbarian back in the day. Um, yeah. I do remember back in the day where you used to be able to do the DEL space colon del space c colon and it would actually try to delete your c drive <sighs> das was fun choo choo thanks it's it Um, there was a, there's a really cool DOS, oh, was it Populous? God, I don't remember. There was, there was a fairly uh, popular game on DOS um, that would, every time you, w you close the game, it would crash, the game actually crashed, and it would give you an error message on the DOS screen. And the devs couldn't figure out how to keep it from crashing. Um, so instead, they changed the error message. So instead of saying an error message, it would say, like, thank you for playing. Was it? Oh, it might have been Commander Keen. Um, so instead of, like, displaying an error message, it would just say, like, thank you for playing Commander Keen. It was one of those old school janky solutions. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, carry on. The vanilla game has quite a bit to it. Uh, especially with production chains and seasonal growth. Um, if you're into logging, if you, if you like logging, the lumberjack mod is very popular. Uh, it basically makes your chainsaw be a bit more functional. Um, it's one of the few mods. Oh, the I I got to be honest. One of the mods that I enable every single time is this here. No wait, this here configurable maintenance and paint cost in vanilla. These are the maintenance cost and paint cost is ridiculous. So there is a mod, I think it's called configurable maintenance and it allows you to set the maintenance cost, the uh, interval, paint cost and paint inter interval. And I drop these to as low as they are, they can be. That was, uh, I do remember in vanilla, like the maintenance costs were just insane. There's some other ones that are like personal taste. Um,
you know, there's a good amount of just equipment mods out there, different kind of types of tractors. I, st I personally prefer the older style, especially like the square bulky tractors. So I tend to mod in some of those. What's up, Tim? How you doing? Uh, oh, Ambush, I love this tractor. This is a... I, I have... I've actually wanted one of these in real life for quite a long time. So when this popped on the mod hub the other day, nice weed farm. Yeah, we need to do something about that. Um, when this popped up on the mod hub, I was I was pretty stoked about it. And I give give the modder a lot of credit. Um, it is very detailed. Like you can actually see the fan and belts and everything modeled in the front and. Uh, the like it actually has the player attached to the levers and it does all the gear shifting and everything and it's it's yeah that's on mod hub um it's the far mall it's under small tractors there are there are a couple maps i thought there was a flat world There's a couple that are pretty open. Repair and paint settings? Is that what it is? Perfect. Thank you. He's out off the side. I think my grandpa used to have one of those. Hold on. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a look at Mod Hub real quick. Yeah, I thought that there was a map on Mod hub. <laughs> what? So downloadable content. This is the mod hub. You can also browse these from the farm sim website, um, but you can actually activate these in game. You were saying, Gundenhall construction map. That's the one I was thinking of. Thank you. Look, there's the old Hagenstad. Remember Hagen? Remember Hagenstad? Um, a lot of people use this one. So No Man's Land is pretty popular, and I use this too. It is, it's not flat per se, but it's pretty empty. Yeah, this one here, the construction map. So this is all, all flat with just the cell points right in the middle of the, the map. So this is probably the closest you'll get to just an all flat map. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna launch a new map right now, but I just wanted to. You were asking for a flat one, so I wanted to show you this. That's what I was thinking of the construction map. All right, let's get back in a couple minutes. Additional field info is nice, by the way. It, when you're looking at the field, it shows you more details about it. Um, you know, brush cutter because... And actually, you may have seen there I had a mod that is a construction grid snapping. I actually think that mod is obsolete now. I'm pretty sure the last update to FarmSim added um, placeable grid snapping by default. That's what it, that's where I was trying to sell it to. Good sapping is in stock now. Yeah, I thought I saw that on the, mass, the patch notes. You said the animal dealer. That's where we're at. That's where we took those bales to to try and sell them. What about sniper? Why am I being super specific with these? Eh. I almost wonder. Um, yeah, I'm almost wondering if it's because the these are modded bales. Which again, I haven't really seen that issue on modded bales before, but I guess it's a possibility. 
which is a little disappointing, but we could we should still be able to use them for animals. It does mean that I won't be investing in the, the auto load trailer for these as well if we can't sell these bales. And thanks for checking that, Red. Do do do. Yeah. Why am I? I always take the hard way. I always forget that I can just grab them and right click and huck them. You know, it's uh, also kind of funny. For the better part of a year, I got pretty good practicing on how to rotate an object by having it clip or uh, fall off the side of another thing. So like here, what I would do if I needed it to be flat, I would lean it right on the edge like this and just drop it and let it roll over to be flat and you're not gonna do it this time. But I got pretty good about doing that with like pallets and stuff. Totally forgetting that when you pick something up, you can just hold down the middle mouse button and move your mouse and rotate it <laughs> for so long. I, and I guarantee some of you guys have seen me drop things off the edge to get them to land on the other side. And I completely forgot you can just rotate them. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Have you been doing the same thing, Tim? So, uh, carry on. I do not and generally cannot take song requests. So... The music you're hearing here is played through Pretzel Rocks, uh, which is a which is a music player. Um, this is not a tilt trailer. This is technically a grain trailer. It 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 uh the back folds down, um, but it does not have a tilt function. So what you're hearing here is through Pretzel Rocks. Pretzel. Um, works directly with a intellectual property attorney and they go to the rights holders of the various songs and secure contracted license agreements to allow you to be able to play music synced up with your stream or YouTube. It's called a sync license. They also get, get um, authorization for performance licenses too. So they go through all the rigor mode. Music licensing is a pain. Pretzel does all that for you. So you don't have to worry. When I'm playing these songs here, I don't have to worry about copyright infringement. Um, the, like I said, the rights holders of these songs have contracts with Pretzel granting license using. If I do song requests, pretty much guarantee that I will not have the secured license uh, or the secured authorization to use whatever song you're requesting. Um, and if I don't have a license, I'm technically in copyright violation and the owner of the license can do what's called a DMCA takedown, which is the Digital Millennia Copyright Act. It gives enforcement mechanisms to enforce a copyright. So by doing song requests, what you're what you're effectively doing is you're putting yourself at risk to lose your channel because the DMCA does actually, in its enforcement regulations, it has guidelines for um, repeat offenders. So long story short, no, I don't have song requests. I probably will never have song requests um, because the inherently having song requests pretty much means that I wouldn't have the license to to actually play the songs that you're requesting. Now sometimes I'll switch out and um, I'll play like Popsky. I, Popsky has specifically granted access to you, or granted the license, granted the permission, excuse me, to use all his music. Um, and I do have a couple commissioned Popsky songs as well. But occasionally I'll switch out. Just say, uh, does it have... I don't think... Do I even have a song request? Oh, there's a whole different... Yeah, and there's, there's a whole different thing with public performance licenses, too. Um, and music... Music licensing is so complex. 
And I will say, Twitch, I think, interprets the license incorrectly. So I would not, if I were you, if you're getting into streaming, if you're curious about like what you need to do to keep yourself safe and stay in compliance with copyright law, I would not follow Twitch's advice. Um, so there is, there's a thing called a sync license, like synchronization. Sync license with music needs to, you need to have a sync license anytime that you have music with video. And the sync license doesn't specify live versus on demand. But typically you see sync licenses come into play when there's like music in a movie or music in commercials where you actually have like that music going along with some sort of video image. The way Twitch interprets that is that the sync license only applies to on demand, which is why they, view, they mo mute VODs to help protect themselves from unlicensed music on an on-demand video. You know, on-demand meaning you have to go out there and actually click on the, the video to get it to start playing. I disagree with their interpretation. The intellectual property attorneys I've talked to disagree with Twitch's interpretation. The owners of the licenses disagree with Twitch's interpretation of a sync license. Um, so in general, make sure that if you're playing music on your stream, you use a source where it is confirmed that you have the appropriate permission to play those songs. You do not want to, uh, you do not want to be the one that becomes the um, example case. <laughs> not to rejection movies, call it. Yeah, um, and it is like. So technically, like, this is where licensing gets kind of crazy. I know there are a lot of streamers out there that just play Spotify. If you read your Spotify agreement, it actually says in there that you're not allowed to rebroadcast. So, and the reason for that is Spotify does not secure the licenses for you to rebroadcast the songs, and it does not grant you sync license to the songs. The license they have is a distribution license to be able to essentially share those songs with the paid user. So they have a limited license on them. Um, so when you're playing your Spotify list on your stream, not only are you in copyright violation because you don't have permission, you don't have the appropriate permission for the license that you need, you are also in violation of Spotify's terms of service. So you could lose your Spotify account, you could lose your Twitch account, and you could potentially, theoretically, get a nice fat civil suit that you get to go defend in court. And oh, by the way, you do not have enough money to go up against the recording industry's lawyers. Just, like, you can just take that right now. So uh, that is a really, really, really long way of me saying Nope, for my protection and for your enjoyment, I do not enable, uh, I do not have song requests. And they gave you the massive reason why. And I, anytime somebody mentions DMCA, I know it kind of starts to get, getting into a heated argument about how DMCA is terrible and should be gotten away from, etc, etc, etc. Keep in mind, DMCA is a tool to enforce copyright. It is not the copyright law itself. Um, and one of the things about the DMCA is it has limited liability of song requester. Yes, the times of song requests are fun. Blame Ninja, by the way. When, uh, when Ninja started, when a streamer got so popular that they were doing interviews on daytime talk shows then the recording industry and license holders in general became aware that there was income they were losing out on twitch became known and once the platform is known people want their cut and rightly so like and it's so DMCA could use some refinement. Um, 
What people tend to forget about the DMCA is that DMCA specifically creates limited liability for websites. Um, so the, the reason DMCA came about was actually a response to copyright infringement by user uploaded content. So one of the things in the D D Digital Millennia Copyright Act is it outlines things that a um, outlines essentially safe harbor so that a website owner, a website operator, so let's say Twitch, Twitch can host a website and they can provide a service like they do and have users create content. And so long as Twitch responds to a notice in an appropriate fashion, Twitch is not responsible for the copyright infringements created by its users. That is the safe harbor. It protects Twitch and it protects any content host from the copyright infringement of its users. Think about this from a monetary standpoint. If you're going to create a website and you're going to allow people to upload things on your website, do you want to be financially liable for the things that your users upload? So if one, like if you were, <laughs> I think this actually goes back to like Yahoo days, Yahoo um, chat room days. So if you're, if you're GeoCities, I know some of you remember that, or your Facebook or your Twitch, and you have however many millions of users, would you continue to operate? Would you even offer that service anymore if you were financially on the hook anytime one of your users violated a copyright? And the, the straight up answer to that is no. Um, so, the big one of the big things DMCA does is it outlines the things a site needs to do in response to a notice that there's copyrighted material. Uh, and if they do those steps, Twitch is not held liable. So Twitch can allow people to upload content without being financially on the hook for all copyright infringements done by the users. If we didn't have that protection, I guarantee you, you would not see sites that allow user uploaded content. So basically the internet, right? Um, and DMCA, we see, we talk about DMCA a lot in relation to music, frankly, because music is where we see it applied most, but DMCA actually applies to essentially any copyrighted material. Um, I am starting to see DMCA used more by artists when their art is stolen and reposted. We can talk EFTs about that. Um, we, can talk, we can talk all day about um, the crypto whatever bullshit and how it's probably right, violating copyright. Um, <clears throat> I see, I see emote artists who. If somebody steals their emotes, I've been seeing some more emote artists use the DMCA tools to enforce their copyright. Uh, so it is, like, we hear it with music, but that's just because music licensing is really complex. DMCA doesn't change music licensing. The music licensing itself is really complex. DMCA is just a tool to enforce copyright. Yeah, see, that's, yeah, uh, you touched on it there, Red. Not a lot of people talk about it. So technically, when I buy Farm Sim, when I buy this game, anybody any read anybody read the uh, user agreement in the beginning? If I buy a copy of Farm Sim, do I have the right to make copies of the software I've purchased and distribute those copies? No. Um. Do I have the right to sell you portions of it or sell you code of it or whatever? No. Technically, most of the user agreements also do not allow rebroadcast 
of the content either. And this is especially true on like story driven games. Um, however, the games industry has a much more give and take relationship. They know that exposure to video games does move copies. Um, and that, that can be shown time and time and time again. So while technically most of the publishers and developers retain their rights on um, essentially the content and who can use it, I, we'll talk about Nintendo in a second, don't worry. Uh, while the publishers and developers do retain those rights, technically they could and some have essentially said, no, we did not give you, we did not give you permission to use our material to sell as your own. So, take it down, or we'll force you to. I'm awake! I don't need you to do that. These failures. Um, one of the areas you saw this, the, uh... Firewatch. The Firewatch developer, um, a certain content creator had done some actions that the Firewatch developer did not agree with. And so the Firewatch developer said, we're revoking your ability to use our material. We made this game. You have 20, 30 some YouTube videos where you're selling content on our game. Um, we're revoking our permission. We're revoking your permission. We did not give you express permission anyway. But we're now being very explicit that we do not grant you permission to use our content. Take it down. And when the content creator went no, then the Firewatch dev issued a DMCA takedown. And YouTube had to comply. Um, and it was 100% within the developer's legal rights to do so. Now, there's the social pushback on it, but it was in their, within their legal rights. And that's, that's video game licensing. Nintendo, so, tech, okay, I'm gonna stop for just a second. <laughs> Let's do a little recap here, because where I'm actually doing work. So, um, I actually bought more copies. Uh, so that's, that field's planted with potatoes. Um, if we look here, it's uh, growing now. And it needs rolling. We don't really have a roller, so whatever. Um, and if we look at it from the precision farming, the um, so pH levels are within the range we need them to. See, they're down here in the green levels. The nitrogen, the same thing. This is where it needs to be target-wise. We may actually do another. I think it's okay. This one obviously is a problem. Um, and the yield there. We'll know the exact yield once we actually start harvesting. Um, and that's seed rate. So this field is done. This field's planted in potatoes. We're going to do this one in oats. Sorry, we're going to do this one in soybeans, but that's in April. And you may notice this field is weeded over. Okay, I don't currently have a weeder. This also has st uh, stubble in here from our last harvest. I don't have a mulcher to take care of this. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to plow the field over and it'll It'll plow all of this, and then we can cultivate it and plant it. So let's uh, let's go to sleep. Let's make it the next day. Let's make it April, and uh, then we're gonna do all that. Okay. So yes, let's go to sleep. Let's make it April. Okay. So Nintendo. Nintendo's from Japan. Culturally, culturally, Japan has a different view on what we consider fair use. And they exert their legal copyright enforcement stronger than most American developers do. That's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's a cultural thing. And they see it more as a product protection. So Nintendo as a company takes a much firmer stance on what they allow for using their game and use, using their games and using their products in content distribution. Um, so Nintendo is well known for being very aggressive 
on their takedowns and very aggressive on their enforcement. Uh, so this is this is allow fields, right? So no, right, this is limited to fields. Yeah, so this is limited to fields. So we're not going to create new fields. So what we're doing is we're basically just plowing all this stuff through. We're not going to get the greatest, like we're still going to have a reduced um, precision score, but I don't have the equipment I would need to take care of this other than a plow. So that's why we're going to do it as a plow. Um, and <laughs> Holly, yeah, they got some pushback. I will say like the person they did that DMCA against um, made some pretty terrible comments. So, yeah, they definitely, the dev definitely got some pushback on it, social media wise. Uh, but a lot of people agreed with what they did based on the situation they did it in. It was still kind of like. It was kind of an eye-opening move when it comes to video game licensing because people still kind of forget that this whole um, playthrough live streaming thing we're technically baking on the good graces of developers. Now, uh, doesn't it affect the tillage? Well, because I'm not using a direct drill, doesn't it not give me the higher tillage score? Yeah, and there's a reason I wasn't saying names. Apollo. I mean, it doesn't take much, right? If you just Google Firewatch Dev DMCA, it'll you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, see, that's the thing, Miss Failures, is that isn't always true. Now, with video games, it tends to be more. And like I said, there's a much more of a cooperative understanding with the video game publishers. Um, you know, that argument has been made about music as well. But let's be honest, if you're stream like if you're playing Taylor Swift on your stream, are you really giving additional exposure to Taylor Swift, you're you're not moving that needle. Just a heads up, you're not generating sales for Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, and I would venture to say that it is very, very, very rare that somebody hears a song as background music on a stream and goes, oh, I want to go buy that song or album. Uh, video games are different. There are many times where you'll see your favorite streamer playing a video game and go, hey, that looks interesting. I will go buy it. Um, which is why... <laughs> what up, Saber? Yeah, that said, Popsky is awesome. <laughs> buy his stuff. <laughs> it's true. I, I legit... like Popsky is probably the example. Not only did I... When I heard Popsky, not only did I go and buy his entire albums, I, and I think I've bought Popsky's entire discography multiple times, um... I also have commissioned him to do songs from, you know, hearing his music. And I also have met him. He's a cool guy. But, uh... With video games, there does tend to, tend to be units movement. There is a very noticeable correlation. And you'll see that the you know, one of the advantages of, qu of referral codes... Part of the thing about referral codes is they're trackable. So when you have, like, I don't know, an affiliate program with a certain developer, <coughs> exclamation giants, um, they can actually track that referral code on where referrals are coming from. <laughs> See? Like that. Like that referral code. Hashtag salad. 
<laughs> it's legitimately like the only hashtag sellout thing I have. And it's not really even a sellout. It's I they approved me for their partner program. And uh, what it does, the level I'm at, what it does is essentially a cruise towards free copies to people. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, not that much. Is it, uh, is it obvious that I want a bigger plow? This one might take a little while. I'm really concerned about money. We don't have a lot of it. So doing things with Tiny McPlowerson. What is? That's 1.2. Kids are going without shoes this year. Kids don't need shoes. Shoes? I can't remember. Just cultivating, knock down the uh, weeds. I can't remember. Oh, it increases. Well, that's the opposite of what I want to do. I mean, it makes sense why I would do so. Have a good one, Miss Failures. draw like a penis or something in that, f that other field when we were plowing it? It's times relative. More like scissors? Alright. Yeah. It's kind of like scissors. Yeah, and arguably, um, when it comes to games where developers have a vested interest in not allowing um, them to be streamed or um, playthroughs or any of that, story games are probably the best argument. Especially the uh, story games that are sometimes referred to as like walking simulators and there's the, there's some great story experiences out there um, but story games tend to be the kind of games where there's not a lot of variance in the playthrough it's a experience that you really only get the first time um, so those are the kinds of games that can definitely lend themselves to somebody just going and quote experiencing the game by watching somebody else's playthrough and not paying for a copy themselves. So I think those are the ones where you 
you definitely would see a developer having more of an interest in preventing those sort of let's plays. And let's plays was the time I was looking for the whole time. You know, like... Let's plays on Minecraft, right? Minecraft is arguably one of the biggest or best sandbox games out there. Every single Let's Play is going to be different. Even if they use, like, the same build or the same mod pack or even the same seed, invariably they're going to be different. Um, but there are some people that will go and watch a story game instead of playing a story game because it's essentially the same experience. And that's where I can see it would limit movements. Yeah, and I agree that most don't want to watch. Like, I watch a good amount of uh, farming sim videos. And I bet I would put money that at least one person in chat right now is also playing Farming Sim as well. And I tend to do the same thing. I tend to put streams up of games I'm playing if they're not story games. You just like that. See? <laughs> Have a good one, Sniper. It's good to see you. Still block three. I'm going to take a look at still block three. <laughs> What's that, Red Dirt? Uh, you're not supposed to tell anyone about that. Shh. Listen, it's not my fault that the windows are low enough for me to see through. And also welcome. Thank you, Max. I have, uh, I think the only version of Farm Sim I don't have is 11. And I may actually have 11 as well. I am 6 foot 9. <laughs> like I said, it's your fault the windows are too low. <laughs> Which actually reminds me here. Let's uh let's cut this YouTube video real quick. <laughs> 